Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for November 3rd of 2023. Well, it is titled Jupiter by moonlight. So what do we see here? Well, here we see an image of a couple of objects, in fact, two of the brighter objects in the night sky. Toward the upper right hand side, we see our own moon. And that is the moon. This was taken just a day ago. And that was when the moon was a little bit past what we call opposition or full moon, which would mean that the moon is opposite to the sun in the sky. And you can see the moon up there with some of the structures of lighter and darker areas. And you can also see the halo around it and the uh, effects that is having on the clouds around the around it. So the clouds within our own atmosphere show an iridescence around them due to the bright light of the moon. Now the other object that we see down toward the lower left is the planet Jupiter. And while Jupiter is many times larger than our moon, it is also even farther away, making it look much smaller in the sky than the much closer moon. Now Jupiter is now at opposition and in fact was opposite to the sun yesterday. And that is when Jupiter is at its most prominent in the night sky. When something is at opposition, being opposite to the sun means that it rises as the sun sets and sets as the sun rises. And that means it's up all night long, making it the best time to be able to observe an object like this. So it is again a chance to see Jupiter and Jupiter will be very prominent over the coming weeks as it is still very prominent in the night sky. Now, in order to get an image like this, you've got to combine a couple of them because there is a vast difference in brightness between the moon and Jupiter. The moon will look far brighter and then than Jupiter. And if you try to illuminate one, you will overexpose the other. So if you try to get Jupiter in the image, then you will overexpose the moon. And if you try to get the moon in a nice image, you will so underexpose Jupiter that it will be hard to see. So putting two images and blending them together allows you to see both of them together in one image. Now, our moon is not the only moon in this image. If you actually look close to Jupiter, you can see Jupiter's moons around it as well. Now, these are the large Galilean satellites of Jupiter. And you can see a couple of them going diagonally from lower left to upper right very close to Jupiter itself. You can see at least one to the left and two to the upper right. So those are the large satellites, in fact, comparable in size to our own moon that we see around Jupiter and which were first seen by Galileo back in the early 1600s when he turned his small telescope to the largest planet in the solar system. And it was one big piece of evidence to show that the Earth would be going around the sun instead of the other way around. Now this didn't actually prove anything, but it did show that there could be objects other than Earth that could have other things orbiting them. So that kind of began the uh, process of us transforming from a geocentric model that we had been using uh, through the 14 into the 1500s to the heliocentric model that we know of today. So that was our picture of the day for November 3rd of 2023. It was titled Jupiter by Moonlight. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture, previewed to be Jovian close up. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.